influenza, Ebola, SARS, Hendra, Nipper, Zika, plague, and now COVID-19. This is just the latest in a long list of diseases that have spread from animals to humans. Diseases that are carried from animals to humans are known as zoonoses or zoonotic diseases. And because we mostly talk about how disease affect us humans, the disproportionate effect of zoonotic diseases on public health can be quite surprising. Zoonotic diseases account for 60% of emerging infectious disease outbreaks around the world, and more than 70% of those come from wildlife. And the main reason is because our human activities, such as destroying wildlife habitats and modern farming practices, bring us into greater contact with wildlife. Our activities not only threaten our precious ecosystems and the conservation of biodiversity, but also our own health. And just as an example, a 2017 study in, in southwest China discovered 11 um, previously unrecorded coronaviruses among bats in just one single cave. And a 2019 study of over 1,500 people living in the surrounding districts found that several of them tested positive to those bat coronaviruses, and over 250 of them reported respiratory or flu-like illnesses. With retrospect, we can say that was a warning, but it wasn't heard. So to prevent future pandemics, we need an effective model for disease management in wildlife that both facilitates this kind of testing and research um, and can also spot the signs to prevent further potential zoonotic disease outbreaks. Together with an international team of wildlife experts, we've set out steps to significantly reduce the risk of animal to human disease spillover through effective surveillance. And an effective model for this disease surveillance should be proactive. It should enable decentralised testing and also centralised data management and also be able to guide governments in how to regulate and manage the wildlife trade. We've got affordable and portable devices that have been developed that allow for rapid local pathogen testing and also whole genome sequencing. So by equipping and training local wildlife and public health professional teams with this type of technology, that would allow for a really proactive approach to pathogen monitoring. And this could occur at the places of highest risk, such as in the wildlife markets or on farms, uh, even in wild animals in remote areas. These decentralised laboratories would feed into a publicly accessible, curated repository of this animal pathogen data, and that would allow us to spot disease indicators um, and rapidly alert us to spillover risks. And it could even share data to assist in identifying antivirals or vaccination targets, for example. And finally, I think we need to manage, and ideally, greatly reduce or even stop the global trade in wildlife. These wildlife markets around the world are a major risk factor for disease, as well as a huge issue for conservation uh, and animal welfare. And animals are kept in these markets in really inhumane, cramped conditions, and that compromises their immune systems, making them more susceptible to disease, and also keeps them in close contact with humans. But the trouble is, is the wildlife trade often occurs outside legal structures. So we need um, disease surveillance that doesn't criminalise participation. As a first step, we should establish a recognised global standard for managing wildlife trade in terms of disease risk. And few countries currently consider this as a factor in regulating these legal wildlife imports and exports, let alone the illegal trade. And COVID-19 and these other zoonotic disease outbreaks show us they really should. And this global standard should include local pathogen screening where the wild animals are traded. And this would also inform wildlife trade policies, allowing for greater protection for at-risk wildlife, while remaining responsive to these shifting political landscapes and even funding. 
And this kind of approach is a really good example of a growing area of interest amongst health experts called One Health. And this One Health approach considers disease and other issues in the context of these connections between human, animal and environmental health. Public health measures that apply this One Health concept and approach can give us earlier warnings of the potential and actual infectious diseases and also faster global responses.